Companies, if companies can pay women less, yes. why don't they hire all women? Well, that's a whole nother story. Really? I, under I understand your, your, your argument, mm -hmm. and I understand that you're angry. I'm not angry. I no, can no. hear it in your voice. Listen I'm not to angry. your voice. I'm hearing now my voice, and I sound pretty calm. You have now shifted the quality of your voice, and I thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> and you've just given me a condescending look, and that's another reason, reason why we need feminism. And now I'm done, and thank you right. so much. Yes, let's be real. I do not want to be hanging on the side of a window. No, I do not want to be building a house. You should do that. Men barely what would you rather be doing? Online shopping, isn't men, it? Men barely building houses these days. Um, they barely build in-house. They barely do any fixing these days. They barely do all the That's the guys you stuff. date. That's no, I'm, the guys I'm you saying date. in general. I'm saying that's in general. That's not true. If you say in general, that's modern, not true. Modern men, they then don't want to do it. They if don't want to do it if anymore. That's, if that's okay. not true that men are building, how are we having every infrastructure we have? Because it's not women building these things. Well, what we're talking about is it's be very interesting watching the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement, how it's all developed. Welcome back to Piers Morgan on Censor. Revelations about disgraced movie director Harvey Weinstein's abuse of women sparked a global reckoning with predatory male behaviour. But five years on from what became known as the Me Too movement, there's a growing backlash. Some influential people argue it's become divisive. Pitting them as sexes against each other with an assumption of male guilt, leaving many young men feeling marginalised. Um, but it showed me the sensitivity around all this. And if any man now behaves in a way that looks like it's toxic masculinity, bang, they're expunged. Is in that process masculinity itself getting expunged and demonised? I would say so. I'd say exactly what he thinks. It's a lot of young men feel they're getting disenfranchised by society. But what we're talking about is it'd be very interesting watching the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement, how it's all developed. Isn't it absurd how women supposedly match men in capability yet rely on gender quotas to secure jobs? It's pathetic to think you're so unappealing in the workplace that companies need to be forced to hire you. The truth is, companies often hire women because they feel compelled to, not because they genuinely want to. From what I've seen, women tend to bring nothing but drama to the workplace. When a male employee is given a task by the boss, he gets it done. But when a female employee is given a task, she's more likely to argue about it. If you want efficiency, hire men. If you want headaches and office gossip, hire women. Gender quotas and diversity-focused hiring practices should be legally reevaluated. These practices are blatant forms of discrimination. Hiring decisions should primarily be based on talent, skills, experience, and the quality of one's work, maintaining a merit-based approach. Women epitomize excessive pride and narcissism leading to detrimental outcomes for individuals and organizations. Unchecked pride can result in failures and difficulties, impacting others' well-being. Women can often be the source of challenges and stress for those around them, embodying pure evil. In today's workplace, particularly younger women can be challenging collaborators. If they form a negative opinion of you, it can create professional hurdles. These negative perceptions might arise from differences in opinion, resistance to tasks, or simply a clash of personalities. Despite their skill level or age, it's frustrating when HR and management seem to favor their viewpoint, creating a hostile environment. The only safe bet seems to be avoiding women altogether to keep your job. Laws, policies, and rules that once mandated employment quotas for women in leadership roles have been invalidated. If someone challenges this, simply ask them to define what a woman is and watch them falter. When hiring decisions mandate employing a woman, some individuals easily bypass quotas by claiming, I identify as a woman. This means employers can now select the best candidate for the job without quota constraints. Equal employment opportunity, EEO regulations, along with rules on identity politics, have been repealed, and diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI initiatives, have essentially replaced them. Women seem to approach their careers with the same level of maturity as they do their personal relationships, which is to say, not much. I've had the pleasure of working in industries like contracting and insurance claims, predominantly with men, and the difference is staggering. While men focus on problem solving and moving forward, women in similar roles often leave emails and voicemails unanswered, forcing me to restart with a male counterpart to get things done. The backgrounds of many women in these positions 
often reveal a stark lack of qualifications. Take, for example, the head of the Budget Management Department, with a degree in political science and experience as a paralegal and swim coach. It's no wonder incompetence thrives. Another leads the Program Analysis Division with an associate's degree in graphic design. Why did we stop hiring based on qualifications? These ineffective women are usually the ones causing chaos in the workplace. You could bend over backwards trying to please them, but you'd have better luck hurting cats. It's a harsh reality that some people or situations are just impossible to satisfy or appease. Despite our best efforts, these individuals always manage to find something to complain about, remaining dissatisfied no matter what. It's a stark reminder that you can't please everyone, and sometimes it's better to focus your efforts elsewhere. The social dynamics with female co-workers can be a nightmare. Their personal issues often take center stage at work, and if you dare not to engage in their drama or listen to their complaints, you're labeled as lacking empathy. It's as if everything else must take a back seat to their problems. In the workplace, men often prefer straightforward communication and minimal drama, unlike women who seem to thrive on chaos. This preference is likely driven by a desire for efficiency and productivity, qualities that are often lacking in environments dominated by women. Additionally, women may find themselves excluded from confidential discussions, particularly when sensitive information is involved. This exclusion is a result of the need to avoid potential misunderstandings or discomfort that could arise from involving women, especially in the wake of movements like Hash Me Too. The Me Too ripple effect isn't just an American ordeal. It's a global nuisance spreading across Europe, England and beyond, especially tarnishing the corporate landscape. Why would any sane man willingly dive into the workplace pool with women, knowing that one false move could drown him in baseless accusations? Women, often the carriers of workplace drama and gossip, are like a virus infecting productivity and profitability. Businesses, keen on survival, discreetly steer clear of hiring them, knowing the drama they bring could be the death knell for efficiency and profits. Offering a simple solution to a colleague's hunger with, then eat something, is seen as overly empathetic in a world where women want a standing ovation for the smallest tasks. They crave validation like vampires crave blood, unable to function without constant praise. It's as if doing their job isn't enough. Every mundane chore demands a grand celebration. Many women seem to have forgotten the basic premise of work, to perform assigned tasks and earn a salary. They dodge responsibilities like Neo dodges bullets in The Matrix. But when the paychecks stop, suddenly, they're clamoring for those neglected tasks. Let's be crystal clear. I have zero objection to women in top positions if they've earned it. I'd pick the best person for the job, regardless of gender. But making hiring decisions based solely on gender is just plain stupid. Men are smart to minimize interactions with women at work and should steer clear. Treating women like they're invisible and creating a moat around yourself is just common sense. Over the past decade, the feminist agenda has shoved down laws that force companies to hire women. Gender quotas demand female board members and department heads, like in marketing and procurement. However, these policies come at a cost, and both women and feminism are to blame. Women need to own up to their role in this mess. While men aren't perfect, the Hash Me Too movement has backfired in some ways. Men who harass or abuse should be held accountable, but false accusations should be treated as their own form of harassment and abuse. Working alongside women can feel like navigating a minefield, always on edge about causing offense. Men understand the risks of even the smallest missteps, while women often don't get it. Women know society and the law often have their backs, giving them the power to exploit or make up allegations against men, putting men's careers in jeopardy. And that's it for today on Sigma Traits. Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Support this channel through membership. You can also support through PayPal link in the description. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you all tomorrow.